preface it with with me saying i know sexual harassment is bad folks don't do it don't hit on your coworkers. leave them alone like don't even flirt with your coworkers. like go to work get your bag go home um but, like, I do kind of miss the flirting between Leon and Hunnigan. It was so funny in the original. No, you're kind of cute without those glasses. Give me your number when I get back. May I remind you that you're still on duty. Story of my life. Humanize a character that is otherwise just this, like, invincible badass. You know, Leon does these, this crazy stuff. Oh, He's the typical nice. sort of brooding tough guy and whatever but you see like you're like okay he has a job he has co-workers he strikes out with women he has awkward conversations um you thought i would be dressed as ashley didn't you Leon! as if i could miss an opportunity to wear the iconic jacket maybe we'll do some ashley later in a special episode if you're good hello there i'm et well today i guess you can call me low rent leonora s kennedy is a new channel so thanks for joining me i'm glad you're here both watching this video and you know existentially in the world i hope you're hanging in there in case you haven't figured it out by now we're gonna be playing some resident evil 4 today resident evil 4 specifically the remake released by capcom in march of this year 2023 it's a great fall game it's got hearth fires and cozy jackets dead leaves scattered through the rustic spanish countryside and of course an army of the undead looking to chainsaw you although you know speaking of fall i've been wearing this jacket for a while it's getting toasty so i'm gonna throw it off it's getting hot in here so take up all your clothes i am getting so hot i have lots of thoughts about the jacket by the way I mean, nothing revolutionary, of course, just that I love it. I have thoughts on, you know, Leon's character design. <whistles> All right. Let's pop a headphone in so you can actually hear the game and also Capcom's iconic sound design. Leon! Take a moment to look at the title card. I'm a big game design nerd in terms of all aspects, so my commentary is going to run the gamut, particularly, you know, from writing, but also to things like level design, mechanics, UX. I love how simple and minimalist this is, just Game title, nice crisp font, kind of creepy, goes with obviously the vibe of the game, but also the rest of the imagery, posters, etc. The RE, of course, always stands out. Nice little forest, it's kind of barely moving, doesn't distract your eye too much. You'll notice with the copyright too that um, it's obviously for 2023, but also for 2005, which is, of course, the year that the iconic original came out. Resident Evil 4. Most of my commentary this playthrough is going to be centered around both what I mentioned earlier, just general game design stuff, but also, of course, Capcom's decisions and how they chose to remake this game. As most people online have spent months discussing in the media. This is really a masterpiece in adaptation, uh, modern adaptation. All right, we'll jump right in. So this is not going to be a blind, guys. Sorry, I played the shit out of this game when it first came out in March. The problem, though, is it's been a while since I played it. I, like most people, have been completely on the uh, Baldur's Gate 3 bandwagon. So not only has it been a while since I played this game, it's been a while since I've been on my console. This turn-based combat is very different in terms of challenges on your reflexes. <laughs> Compared to zombies running at you with pitchforks and aiming, we're gonna start off on standard here, even though I have beat it on all the difficulties. I think I'm almost up there with um, platinum. I probably just need some more of the obscure trophies. <laughs> Thank you. Let's jump in. I'm still getting used to OBS and all of that, but we're gonna keep up leveling our, um, our skills here, guys, on this channel as far as production quality. You sure about that? You sure about that? I actually do like loading screens, personally. I know with five, they're sort of, you know, cutting down on them, but I think they're a good breather mentally and a good place to put information. Okay. <laughs> Not your day, girl. It's like, I just wanted to backpack through Europe on my gap year. I always thought this opening scene was you know, a little pointless. I mean, they set the tone, 
Like, you know, you're, you're like, I'm back, but September 30th, it doesn't give you that much. This monologue is so iconic, isn't it? Forget. Nice and grungy. Leon's our favorite emo traumatized boy. Traumatized 90s emo boy. <laughs> it's all very, you know, Kurt Cobain, isn't it? Somehow I made it out. Kurt Ten Cobain, if he were a Weren't so lucky. I was we're probably going to play two on this channel at some point. Uh, let me know if there's particular interest for that. Um, that two is, the remake of two is great. Are you in the original on like an emulator? Punishing missions. <laughs> oh, look at him. Really killed me. But at least I kept my mind off everything. The fact that that is basically the only place where they Just actually animate his hair happened. moving is objectively okay. really funny. Even oh, Marvin. That, I, that is his name, right? Sometimes I blank on your names. I am so glad they kept the iconic leaning against the window opening shot. It's great. It's so good for character. And also, it puts you right back. Like, I'm really sad I can play this as a blind for the channel because like my face I was beaming I'm like oh I'm so back this I'm game the nostalgia of my childhood the dopamine was just as close to nowhere that I've ever seen and the music of course let's just say looking for someone and it's good for character obviously he's the brody type Capcom in general I've noticed really likes Lee and like leaning on things, showing his reflection through windows. They love like showing his jawline. I, I love that they're just absolutely besotted with the character and the way the fans are, and you can tell by the art sort of way that they frame him. Like look at this shot. It's a great one in Infinite Darkness of him in a helicopter. Sorry guys, I'm gonna be talking to the cutscenes. Right to jail, right away. A lot of people played this game a lot. And you know, bigger commentary. Oh, the jacket. Should be just another day in the office, right? Mm. I mean, last week there was a search for some missing hikers. I'm sure you'll do your best to help me. <laughs> Their laugh, like, yeah, sure. Not speeding at all. Cops breaking the law. I think this is it. Nature calls, huh? I'll be right back. <sighs> yeah. Good for you. I'm glad that they actually translated the Spanish, thank god. I hate when subtitles do that and they just do like, speaking a foreign language, it's so rude. And he's drunk driving too? He's speeding and drunk driving. Great. It's an exemplar to the police force. <laughs> That's actually, it's interesting that Leanne doesn't smoke because it's one of the only cliche, well, Chris does, as we know. Fuck you all, I'm having a fucking cigarette. It's one of the only cliche sort of Western, like, bad boy type things that he doesn't do. I mean, they have him riding motorcycles, wearing leather jackets. We know in canon from, like, a mild, mild, mild spoiler, but from the movies and whatnot, he has a bit of a drinking problem. Give me a drink, bartender. Maybe more than a bit. Um, and he's, of course, like Brody and a smart ass and has sort of the emo meets boy band haircut. But he doesn't smoke. So there, ch chalk that off for him. <laughs> okay, we got our cops wandering through the woods here. It's always reassuring when authority figures are also lost and confused. <laughs> he sure is taking his time. Did he fall in? Such an old joke. My like parents and stuff will you say that. And it's just, and like, take a look. Not funny. Oh, watch the car. Wouldn't want to get a parking ticket. So much for helping me. Okay, here we go. Great seamless transition into giving us control of the character there by using his, you know, shoulders as a focal point. See what's taking so long. Letting us know right away that there's going to be a chapter structure. So I guess a little background on me while we um, move Leon through this little opening section while well, he gets himself situated. So I'm a writer by trade and an editor, uh, starting mostly with fiction, speculative fiction, which is, you know, the umbrella term for like sci-fi and fantasy. 
but I've w veered into working more on games recently. I'm a big gamer, big n nerd all around. So hence this channel, want to share my passion for it. Um, mostly oh, working on stuff that I won't gone. be able to talk about for several years because <laughs> that's how the games industry works. Um, but yeah, I also, I work with horses during the day. <laughs> because, you know, being a creative, not super lucrative. Maybe we'll do like a Red Dead Redemption 1 and 2, 1 or 2, 1 and 2, who knows, playthrough if there's interest on that and I can share some of my, you know, horsey knowledge. That's my girl. Hence the, uh, the perpetual farmer's tan. We're just coming out of the, you know, summer season of, you know, being out in the fields um, under the sun for long periods. So that will probably go away. Okay, so as far as difficulty tuning, obviously this is sort of the tutorial section. They're easing us into it, which makes sense given the narrative, because, you know, Leon is getting his bearings in this new environment. He's quite literally been dropped into the woods. Without a compass. Maybe he does have a compass because he's, you know, secret agent. That was a really nice um, transition camera angle there into the house. Well, and again, the sound design man, um, Capcom really distinguished themselves for that initially when their earlier games were coming out about how good they are at um, horror through sound. You were almost a jill sandwich. You know, Creepy squelching noises, uh, random rumbling in the house, pipes, all that kind of stuff. Um, breathing, hearts beating. Uh, so even the flies right now are already starting to creep me out a little. Although I don't typically get scared all that much. So if you're watching or playthroughs for like jump scares and for people screaming, that's not really going to be my thing. Sorry, guys. Aww. But stick around. We got other stuff to offer. Game. Very smartly, they tend to use doors um, as transitions into like cutscenes. It was just an autosave that came up. Uh, game design terms, they did. They talk a lot about like gates and keys, and sometimes gates can, you know, literally be doors. <laughs> All right, we're exploring this first open cabin. Got like a little um, arcane local totem. Crude charm that says judgment is nigh. Although I love the idea that Leon knows the word for um, both judgment and the old fashioned word nigh in Spanish, which, you know, in a minute you'll see, it sounds like he knows high school Spanish. Headcanon maybe that he called Hunnigan up and asked her, texted her, yo. Okay, he's already- oh, I think I have, um, I have jog toggled on, that's why, because I'm like, he's already busting through doors, man, come on. Kind of, I was a run and gunner in this, although you know from the way Resident Evil works that that door's not gonna be open. Like, if, if you- these games are great when you have knowledge of the franchise, um, and you're a big player. They sort of- Capcom and their design tends to sort of reward, um, player loyalty, and they both subvert it. So, um, I'll talk about that in a minute. I'll shut up now for this. Oh God, I want to make my coffee now. The iconic villager from the original one. Leon's first sort of experience uh, with like Blaga. We love a polite boy. Although, you didn't even really knock before you came in, Leon. You know a key? The high school Spanish folks. Although I can't judge. I, t I was one of those stupid bitches who took French. Even though I live in America and we should all be learning Spanish. That's reassuring. Our friend from the car. The worst night out ever, huh, as a police officer. You go out, have a few beers. Have to chauffeur a foreigner around. We got our first iconic Leon Roundhouse kick. We know our boy loves some kicks, as opposed to Chris, who's more a more a punching boulders guy. Boulder punching asshole. Makes sense though the the kicking. Um, your shins are a lot stronger than your hands, as far as the bone goes. All right, so we picked up a key. Yeah. <laughs> As far as writing goes, the fact that Leon is a master of understatement is one of my favorite things about him. This is not good. Like, gee, no shit. 
Meanwhile, um, mild spoiler. I mean, it's spoilers for this whole sort of franchise. I've played all the games at this point. Uh, the only thing I haven't played recently is the Separate Ways DLC that came out, uh, just came out. So maybe we'll play that as a blind on this channel. That'll be fun. See my initial thoughts about it in real time. But uh, Leon, with the understatement compared to Ethan Winters, who the whole time is like, I'm trapped in this fucking house. Like, it, it, who has appropriate reactions to things. I'm in danger. Versus Leon, who at this point has been so traumatized by Raccoon City, is just like, man, all right, another day at the office. This, this sucks. All right, so we have our friend Mario's badge. We know he's a goner. Sorry, Mario. RIP Mario. My hair. No, no, so I was talking about how Capcom sort of um, really is a rewarding experience when you have knowledge of the franchise. I, of course, they're easy to play um, anywhere to just jump in. You don't have to know Resident Evil to enjoy these games. They are great, um, like insulated, just as like one shots too. But um, they they also are really enriching experiences when you know the franchise because you know you get so used to things like i knew that that door we, that we'd have to find a key for because i know with capcom they love they're like puzzles and collecting things and it's all kind of like MacGuffin hunts but uh they also subvert expectations occasionally and surprise you um with like like seven and eight the way they changed their whole way of doing things, first person, genre, all of that. That was a surprise. And then there are other things that they've done even with this game that are like, oh, you thought we were going to do this because we always do? Nope, we're going to do that. And it, it makes for just a really entertaining experience. Again, they're using sort of a door curtain here to really nicely sort of seamless immersion into cutscenes, which I can appreciate instead of just like a fade to black. This whole game is a lot more cinematic, obviously. Not just from a technical perspective, because the technology is better than 2005, but like they, they made an active decision to be more artsy in the way that they frame things and the, the way the camera moves. I read you. What's your situation? What's your situation? Where's your Spanish now, Leon? What the hell's going on? Sorry, guys, if you see me fiddling, um, I'm not fiddling with my headphone, actually. One of the reasons this wig looks a bit more ratchet is I um, I just got my cartilage pierced up here, well, about a week ago. So I'm trying to make sure that the wig doesn't nudge it too much. Uh, listen to your piercers, folks, and make sure that you treat them well and that they heal well. You know, take care of your body after you violently stamp holes into the, to it that it are not supposed to be there. Because um, I don't want it to heal, you know, tilted or anything. See, you yanked my headphone off right there. But yeah, so you're gonna have to bear with me while um, while that heals. The wig will fit better afterwards when I can actually get it down around my big head. It's full of secrets and knowledge, folks. Um, but it, I don't know. Kind of makes sense. Oh, yeah, that's reassuring, right? Random door opening. It kind of makes sense. I mean, I've been running through the span or Leon or Leonora has been running through the uh, Spanish countryside. Oh fuck, I forgot about this section. Oh my god, all right, so I have, it's been so long since I played this game, my aim is crap. I'm gonna have to take, put these guys down again. Okay. This just keeps getting worse. So I looked into the names, because all the monsters do have, or monsters, um, infected people, creatures, etc., do all have, you know, Spanish names. Um, there's lore. I, when I was doing like early prep for this, um, playthrough, I looked into it, uh, just because I, I like to actually know the lore, you know, and I like to, as much as I can, um, and, and give respect to these creative endeavors and these worlds that, you know, artists have put all of their time into, especially coming from someone who, you know, is on that back end of things now. Um, there's tons of stuff I don't know, though, and I'm always fascinated in learning in general, and I will reply to comments, and I love engagement and starting conversations, so if you have any, like, knowledge bombs you want to drop on me, please let me know. The curiosity for learning has skyrocketed. But let me see. I have a list. I'm trying to remember what he would have been considered. I mean, well, he's just an infected villager, right? I don't see anything that, so I think it's just a Ganado, but he's like a second stage Ganado, right? Because he's a, you know, the heads, like horror movie style 
twisted and he's become a bullet sponge. Um, but I don't see anything for like the second stage of evolution for Ganados. So I don't know, maybe let me know. Get back to it. I'm trying to remember what's the reload? Oh, you know, I can't even reload. I don't have any more bullets. Run, run, run. And yeah, jogging up the stairs. His moveset's kind of funny in this game. Anytime I comment on stuff like this too, FYI, um, not criticism at all. I love this game. I just, I like to get the conversation started about stuff. Um, compare and contrast and all that. But yeah, his moves, I, it's a bit more like MMA fighter this time around. Maybe just the jacket bulking him out, but it's very like, um, so that's funny. Okay, using a door again as a segue into a cutscene. I wonder, I'm assuming Nick... Did the performance capture for this too? I, I, I looked into it, but I'm blanking. Yeah, I mean, he must have, right? Maybe not all of it, because I think Capcom is kind of selective about what they bring certain actors in to do. But. This is Gondor 1. Hunnigan here, what's your sit rep? Hunnigan, our girl. We love the Y2K glasses and lip gloss combo. Our intel was correct then. Well done. Need a location on a nearby lake. I do have to say their their code Bobby names are so obvious. I'm sorry, Baby Bobby. Eagle? You would know right away that Something's that's the president's child. <laughs> My escorts are. I gotta go. Talk later. Help. I guess it's fall. I have some mild allergies going on here. I'll let myself out. Beginning of his sass. I do wish we're gonna talk more in, in better um better places to talk about the difference in tone um between this obviously more grounded, gritty, real uh remake and the batshit tone of sure. Resident Evil, the original Resident Evil 4. Um but I do just in general like that line where he's saying, I'll let myself out. I do wish that they had let I don't I think Nick's voice acting or his acting work I take myself full for this um because i think it's important i'm trying and i would encourage all of you guys to try to get better about referring to anyone working on these kinds of games just specifically as voice actors uh because i still have that tendency because i watch playthroughs and stuff and people talk about the va or they talk about the voice actor and in general now for the most part they're pretty much just actors they're performers they're main cast because they're not just doing voice work anymore. A lot of people are in a volume and they're using their full body. They're doing a lot of craft work. So back to me talking about his voice work, um, his work in general. <laughs> but uh, I'm a big fan of Nick, a uh, fellow Greek guy or Greek American, I would assume based on the last name, from Boston. I am also Greek American and from Boston. Can't tell because my very Greek hair is hidden under this. <laughs> monstrosity of a Leon Kennedy goes clubbing wig, um, or, you know, like Eastern European prostitute. Nice hair though. It is what it is. <laughs> but I'm a big fan of his work uh, on this, and we're gonna talk more about that at various points, but um, I do wish they had let him, I don't know if it was his decision, but I do wish they had let him punch up the comedy occasionally a bit more, or kept more of it. Like the comedy, the like, the just okay we're gonna save here save over that the comedy that you know the the first one was known for just to like smart ass um comments your right hand comes off which are so endearing and that like he's clearly trying to be you know funny and like devil may care but like they don't always land which is it's just so fun and it humanizes him so much more and it's so entertaining but some of the line readings like that first scene that we watched with him in the car in the original it was a lot more like um the deliveries were just a bit more punched up and again like i said i love nick's work on this series i think he's awesome um he seems like a really cool person in general but, uh, so I'm not criticizing, I'm just saying, as an executive decision, I kind of wish. They did still keep some of my favorite lines, though, which we'll get to. Alright, picking up some ammo here. Oh yeah, if you just saw, I shot the crow. If you didn't know that, that's a little, um, Easter egg from 
the original remake that carried through. If you shoot crows, you get some treasure. Although sometimes I wouldn't encourage it because the ammo, this is such a, like, you gotta hoard your resources game because it's sparse on resources even on low um, difficulties. So, like, sometimes it's not worth the money that you get. Oh, I wish I had my rifle. I like the I like the rifle in this game. I don't normally stealth at all. I don't really think Resident Evil games you can quite stealth. Liar! But um, I like using the rifle. I don't know. What about you guys? Like playstyle wise, I'd I'd be very curious to hear about your approaches um, and your favorite weapons. I'm gonna go back and get that after we take care of this guy. He's gonna jump out of the woods. It's very funny working on this game, or playing this game now as someone who um, works on a ranch because it's like they're all using ranching implements. Oh fuck, why is it not triggering that? Okay. Yeah, that, that is one thing that I don't love about that mechanic. You have to really be looking directly at um, the person who's, who's turning into the second stage infected. Oh god, sorry, my hairline is like, my ear is so... Look at this. It's so inflamed. I mean, it's fine. It's not being nudged by anything. Um, I'm not, like, touching it. Nothing's touching it. I have it pinned back carefully. Of course, I wanted to heal. I've been cleaning it with saline twice a day. Haven't been swimming on it. Haven't been sleeping on that side, which has been a bitch. But I just, I wanted to heal properly. Um, but yeah, no, that mechanic, I don't love how... I feel like the trigger for it's really specific. Like you really have to be looking perfectly at it, which I'm not always. And then you have to make sure that the like the button is is cued, or you can see the button on the screen in order for it to work. Um, but yeah, what was I talking about? Uh, yeah, as far as resources, yeah, I'm curious about your favorite guns and stuff. But working on a farm, <laughs> it's funny playing this game now because it's like everyone's using you know farming implements and they're shouting Spanish and everything. A lot of my colleagues are Spanish speaking, um, which again I need to learn. I've been working on it. Although I did live, live in a French-speaking country for a year, so my French did help me. And I speak a decent amount of Greek at this point. Which, you know, maybe, maybe, at, depending, if you guys are interested, we could play some, I'm um, gonna avoid that bear trap there. We could play some Odyssey. I also love that game. So I've played this game so much, I am familiar with where people are. <laughs> Sorry, that might be a little boring, guys. I'm still gonna struggle, though, as you can see, because my aim is so off. But yeah, I'm also I'm also a big fan of Assassin's Creed, the um, the one side in Greece. Love me some Cassandra, and the writing on that is great. Malaka. And that's gonna be the main focus of this channel: just writing, writing, writing. I want to talk about narrative too. I have an English degree too, um, literature. So. <laughs> what a dork. Kind of my thing. I hope I am saying some things that get your mind going. This scene, um, one of my favorites to talk about in terms of game design from the original, just core game design tenets, not even really narrative. You know if you've played the original, so the remake operates a, a bit less on this. And I'd be curious, I haven't looked into it, if you guys, if anyone is aware of this, like please drop a link. But I'd be very curious about the overlap of like new people coming into playing this game and people who had were fans of the original playing it. But I'm sure a lot of people, fans of the original, so they know this scene. Like they know the iconic running through the village scene. It operates on the expectation of the player, games work on loop systems, like reward loops. You do an activity and you somehow get rewarded. The core one that's most common is like you go in, you clear all the enemies, and then you loot the room, and then you go into a different space, you clear all the enemies, you loot the room, upgrade weapons, etc. The reward is the loot, the loop is kind of just the clearing the room. So you go into this encounter and you're swarmed by all these people and you're like, oh shit, I gotta kill all these people in order to advance. And it's subverting player expectations because you probably d try to do that overly ambitious you die a bunch of times because i mean the first one was so hard guys i mean i don't know it, if you forgot or if you played the one recently but like i had forgotten i replayed the the port on ps4 before i played this game um to have some talking points too i'm not gonna go through everything that they've kept and that they've changed because that would be tedious but like just you know to refresh my memory, and I forgot how hard that freaking game was, man. You can't even strafe. You can't move while you aim. You have to stand there and your aim is like, you're probably overly ambitious in that village section and you're like, oh, I gotta kill everyone in order to advance. You died a bunch of times, and then another time you managed to hold on long enough to trigger, I, I forget how long it is, it was like four minutes or something? 
to trigger that the cutscene, which reveals, hey, you didn't need to kill everyone. You just needed to survive. Kept the core sort of architectural design of the village, the like the map, pretty much the same. Obviously, updated graphics and everything, but you know the two-story house with the shotgun in it and all of that. Um, they kept that. I just I don't know. I love talking about this kind of stuff with um, psychology and design. So it's gonna be the channel for the most part. Um, I hope you guys enjoy it. Uh, I hope I find people who enjoy it and who want to talk about it with me. So the reason I've been rambling so much before we go in is because I know I'm not gonna be able to have a coherent conversation with people while I'm running for my life in this in this section. Let's, let's get back into it. The head dropping out the gate and that noise it makes. Such a great touch. Chef's kiss. I, I don't know. I don't think the, the, little, the few little sections where he has his binoculars added much to the game. Like, you know they're doing some crazy shit. You don't need to... Although I guess it makes him look like he actually like is a real special agent and he's not just like or a secret service person, right? It's a weird choice that they're like, oh, he protects the president. He's not just like on a task force, but okay. Um, I guess it makes him look more um, legitimate, credible, because he's actually doing some tactical stuff as opposed to just like bumbling around and finding guns out in the wild. Um, but yeah, again, I don't think it added added too much. We know what's gonna happen here. I I don't think I'm gonna be ambitious and try to kill a bunch of them. I per personally, I prefer to just run around and conserve my ammo. Um, maybe I can have a chat with you guys while we while we run around. But let's. Also, I forget how effective stealthing is in this game. I know you can sneak up behind people and knife them in the neck, but like, is there a point? And normally, Leon's crouching is so slow that like sometimes they, they do turn around. Also, can you imagine your thighs? That's something I think about all the time with games where you're crouching like this all the time. It's so, it's not realistic, even for relatively strong trained people to consistently be over in a crouch like that. Like, your ass would be Oh my god, like you'd be, <laughs> keep it tight, um, and y your thighs, you'd be jacked. It'd be, yeah, it'd be a lot. I think about that a lot with The Last of Us too, personally. Maybe we'll try to loot before, like, the, they really start to swarm us, but you know, fuck it, let's, let's do this. Balls to the walls, people, we're just gonna run around. I'm just gonna do some laps, and it's probably not gonna be that entertaining, I'm sorry. <laughs> and what about you guys, like, do you... Are you go. folks? I, I'm trying to. I'm trying to get better about using unnecessarily gendered language. Um, but I'm such a like '90s kid, grew up in the California area person. I typically am like, "Hey guys," a lot. It's it's annoying. If anyone has words that they've swapped to, that are a good substitute, like let me know. Um, but uh, what do you, my dear viewers? Uh, what do you normally do during this scene? Are you skilled enough? You just go through and you like headshot and everybody, sniping everyone, or I know there's the barn method too. You can light the barn on fire. Oh, all right, we're gonna knife this guy, and then you try. I try not to get in encounters in general because your knife is, you know, um, perishable. Your knife degrades. Uh, as as most people, I mean, this game has obviously been picked over a lot critically in the industry. Um, I'm late to the game with channels in general. Um, I know, but I want to play what I want to play. I'm not just going to play, be playing new releases um, so that I can have my voice first in a conversation. Not even first, it's been buried somewhere underneath all the big games. But uh, I know this game. This game has been talked about a ton. In particular, obviously, our queen of Resident Evil. Big, big fan of her, Suze Spearunter, Susie Spearunter. Um, I love her. Check her out, please. Check out all of her videos on this game. I intentionally kind of avoided them a little bit because I didn't want it to pollute my commentary. I'm sure we just agree on a lot of stuff, though. Um, I just I didn't want to like steal any of her, accidentally absorb any of her. Um, her stuff, you know, but uh, it's this game has been talked about a lot. Um, but one of the things that a lot of people picked up on too is how the knife is really um, their design really redeems the knife. We're not, we haven't gotten to the chainsaw guy yet. Come on, I've been jogging around for a while. There we go. Burn the witch. Perfect timing, right? 
Um, but yeah, this game really redeems the knife. It's kind of become a panic button. You do have to keep repairing it and upgrading it, though. Um, I like that you have to take care of it, that it's not invincible. Um, good stewardship, stewardship in general is really important in life. People take care of things and they will last. Um, including, you know, the planet, hashtag climate change, all of that. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to go on it. I went too deep. But, um, yeah, the knife is really redeemed. But, it, I, obviously, I'm trying not to use it too much because I don't want to just, like, lose it and then be completely screwed. And I know I have a gun, but, like, I don't want to freaking... Oh, fuck. See? Yep. Yeah. Perfect timing again when I'm talking about the knife. I have lost mine. Alright, I'm gonna keep trying to just run around. I mean, the thing I've noticed, too, about these games is, like, I don't... I would love to get some sort of a conversation going about this with people. Um, like, how scared do you actually get during horror games? Oh, fuck. The, the cow is on fire and running at me. It's like a bad workplace nightmare for me. But um, how scared do you actually get during horror, horror games? I don't typically really get all that scared. Although... <laughs> Honestly, watch me say that, and then I'll hook up a heart monitor and do a video for this channel sometime. Do it! And it turns out that I, secretly I've been just like, the whole time, and I didn't know. Um, but yeah, I usually, I don't get that scared. I do get, I get tense, um, obviously, but I think the tension is more just anticipation. It's like, I, I know that I'm gonna have to press this thing, I know that it's gonna be hard, I know that like I'm gonna have to run, so um, I get tense and I panic in that regard, but I don't really get traditionally scared. Maybe occasionally when I play the first time and there are jump scares, I get a little bit like, but I, yeah, I'm not very jump scary in general, just like not my thing. The one thing that I do remember um, actually sort of freaking me out, like I played these games, at night, lights pretty much off in my house alone, and it's 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 a bit savage. It really is. I have friends, I have friends who are like much older than me. They're grown men. They get way more scared watching me play than I do playing them. Um, but the one thing I remember actually wigging me out was uh, the oh here we go, folks. We survived, and I managed to you know have a chat with you while we did it. Look at us multitasking. It was the uh, mild spoilers for Village here for Resident Evil Eight. It was the baby wandering around, um, the big like crying fetus thing. Um, I think maybe there was something psychological going on there with with me being a child bearing age and. There's some stuff going on in America while I was playing it, and I was, I was just like, ugh. Um, but yeah, so that one waked me out. But other than that, no, I don't really get scared. But let me know, what do you guys, I mean, are we all just desensitized? Do you like playing a game that scares you, that's screaming? I know there's a lot of stuff online and literal studies about the correlation between horror and anxiety and why people are attracted to horror and everything. But I um, might be curious your personal thoughts on it, too. Personal experiences. I know there's a, there's reportedly a high correlation between people who are, you know, anxiety prone and whatnot, um, preferring horror because it's like a controlled form of anxiety. It's sort of like an immersion therapy in that sense, people who suffer from it. And I, I personally, I, I'm quite an anxious person too. Um, it's nice to be able to turn that stuff on and off and um, experience it and kind of and experience trauma in kind of a safe environment because there's that distance. And um, I would certainly say it's very true about why I play these games too, so. I don't know, something to think about. Everyone going? Bingo. Ah, I'm so glad they kept that line. Next delivery is great too. And perfect place to drop the title card too. Um, and I love like I love how like art style framed everything is in this game now. There are so many there are very great screenshot opportunities and tableaus in this game that obviously the, the older ones don't have just probably because of the technology and the fact that our expectations of players of, of as players and as consumers in terms of um like cost and and value for a product have changed we want things that are more cinematic um but i can tell that they really consulted people who designed cinema okay we got another call from my girlfriend again i've identified a route to the lake Look for a large windmill. There's a path on the far side of it. Okay. Windmill. Copy that. Hey, not very specific, huh? <laughs> that chicken is just going to town, guys. I don't know if you can hear it. Um, I don't know if I want to talk about this the first time we saw one of the calls to roost. Um, they are from the original game, obviously. I personally think they're a 
bit underutilized here. I wish they had tweaked them or like added more value or content to them in terms of the narrative because they just seem, I don't know, obviously they're a fun callback. Hannigan's a character, like I want them to keep her as a character. I don't want them to just completely get rid of her, but like she doesn't give him that much practical information for her, like his like spy type handler coordinator she just told him to look for a windmill it's like okay um could you give me maybe gps coordinates if i have this fancy like satellite phone thing that i can call you on can you not give me gps um or more a more concrete description like it's a couple of paces to the southwest or of the church or whatever um and he doesn't update her nearly enough in terms of like practical intel and she just doesn't give him enough support so i just i, I find the whole plot device kind of pointless sometimes they seem to sort of use it as a way to plug perceived plot holes so like the time for example later on where ada tells leon where to find um ashley but like i honestly i think leon would have found her on his own too so it's like again i think they're kind of pointless so i'm gonna say this uh i'm gonna preface it <laughs> with with me saying i know sexual harassment is bad folks don't do it. Don't hit on your coworkers. Leave them alone. Like, don't even flirt with your coworkers. Like, go to work, get your bag, go home. Um, but, like, I do kind of miss the flirting between Leon and Hunnigan. It was so funny in the original. You know, you're kind of cute without those glasses. Give me your number when I get back. May I remind you that you're still on duty. Story of my life. Little conversations like that that are not on topic for the like objective or the mission and everything are great because they really like I they're my favorite slight little slice of life things in, in general media um, that feature these like heroic characters are, are one of my favorites because they, they really sort of, you know, they humanize a character that is otherwise just this like invincible badass. You know, Leon does these this crazy stuff. Oh, He's the typical nice. sort of brooding. <laughs> tough guy and whatever but you see like you're like okay he has a job he has co-workers he strikes out with women he has awkward conversations um so i love when you see characters like i don't know eating a burrito or like texting or something when they're supposed to be um off saving the world and the best franchises know when to throw little nuggets of that at their um at their fans it it balances the narrative but also again it's it's just like it's a little b burst of amusement Okay, so we got ourselves a shotgun. I have not run into the area that I know there's a guy waiting in a wardrobe. Which I, as far as a game design thing goes, I loved that. Because it's like, again, you think you're safe. Um, you think everyone's gone. But nope, surprise, there's still, still one guy hanging out. Pick this up. Leon is, um... Is it because he is he low health? No, his health is fine. But he's so he's already winded as as he's running around. I hope the game audio is picking that up. But um, see, he's he's stationary right now, and he's like, um, I don't love the way they did that personally. Uh, the grunts and grunts and efforts. Uh, the like, which is like any like huffing and puffing um, that you record in a sound booth. It's kind of just the like we, like breathy noises. Uh, the, it, noises of exertion when you like go up a ladder or you move something or you're in pain. Don't even get me started on all of the edits of Leon's grunts and efforts <laughs> for low health for Resident Evil 2 that are on like TikTok and all that. Um, you know who you are. Right to jail, right away. We're all, you know, horny on main at this point. <laughs> okay, so we can't get into the barn yet because we need Ashley. Yeah, again, I don't love the way they recorded these. No, I, not a major criticism. It's just um, it doesn't feel intuitive because it's like, oh, there's our man. It doesn't feel intuitive because it's like he's full health, but he's winded when stationary, but he can also like suplex grannies. It's not very realistic. The Last of Us, of course, excels when it comes to that that kind of stuff. Um, the noises that like Ellie and Joel make while they navigate the environment are really immersive. Okay, so we cleared that. We cleared the second story house. We know we can't get into the church. Can't get into that building. We'll go up this tower even though I know it happens. <laughs> Another thing I loved, I don't know 
Maybe I just haven't tried it and it, you can do it, but like Leon, like in the original, can't go down ladders. He just jumps. He goes up ladders. Um, sorry, dude. He goes up ladders, but I don't I don't see him go down ladders and I find that really funny. It's just like, fuck this, and he jumps instead of um, going down. If you do like the amount of jumping out of things, rolling around, kicking that Leon does, your joints would be fucked. Like it wouldn't, your knees, your um, your ankles, probably even your hips. Like it's not, it's a constant impact like that is not good for you. But of course we suspend disbelief when it comes to these games. Okay. Is there another gate? I love how he does the like Aragorn Helm's Deep motion. <laughs> like most um, fantasy geek gamer girlies, I was a big Lord of the Rings person growing up, and of course I had a crush on Aragorn. You to no one. The windmill, um, great camera transition there, uh, really encouraging you in terms of where you gotta go, and encouraging you to look up. Um, because a lot of times with more linear experience games, you kind of forget that they put all this effort into, like, animating literally everything. Um, so remember to look up. The side quests that they do, the requests for the, the, um, the merchant, one of our favorites, I'll talk about him in a bit, also serve that purpose. Because when you're, you're literally looking for medallions, oh, well, you have a request in this area too. But yeah, they, they make you really, um... You know, game designers don't want to put all this effort and work into things that they, like, are certain people are not going to freaking bother to notice. So it's like, they make you appreciate all the design that's gone into the verticality of the space as well. Because you have to literally go searching. Games tend to encourage engagement through, obviously, variety of ways, but it's mostly either inputs per second, which is like, you're being challenged, there are enemies coming at you, or you're in a racing game, or a movement game, or something where the environment's coming at you, and you have to reply and respond um, through your controller or also by somehow through a variety of ways motivating you to explore the environment maybe it's through uh, we were just in there saving maybe it's through like the narrative um there's readables and collectibles and stuff around that and you're like a nerd about the game and the characters and you really want to collect everything maybe you're just a completionist i am kind of a completionist when it comes to games but we're not going to be doing that this playthrough just because i'd rather like be here for the vibes um i'll get treasure and stuff that i remember oh, well, that's yeah so yeah for anyone who didn't know if i had shot that more properly when it was in a better area on the windmill um it would have fallen out of the mud and it would be worth more although i don't know why leon can't just like clean it off with a rag or something when he's selling it to the merchant but so inputs for a second or through motivating exploration either through the narrative um giving you better loot um side quests all that kind of stuff and i think capcom excels on kind of doing both um, it's a linear experience, that's true. So, like, you go through and you, you have low expectations about the replayability because you're like, well, once I know the story and all the maps and you just are going straight, it's not this big open world adventure. It's not a branching narrative with umpteenth endings, like something like Detroit, you know? So you're like, well, am I going to play this again? But yeah, there's a bunch of quests. There's little areas that you, you know, you don't discover. There's Easter eggs towards other things. I personally don't think they use the collectibles and the like readable artifacts and documents in this game as well as they could because um, there's a lot of like a lot more writing and stuff that they could put in and more work. Also, writing on screen is a lot cheaper as far as delivering story than um, I just wasted two months there than uh, dialogue, obviously, because you don't you're not paying an actor to record it um, and you don't have to throw the sound in and stuff. But yeah, so Capcom, I think, is great about doing both um, as far as engagement goes. I talked about that a little bit with requests. Um, and I like how it's, it's a mixture because it's like, well, it's a linear experience. So I'm a big open world girly because it's so packed full of narrative. I love those games. We'll play a lot of them on the channel. But obviously, there's time constraints as well when it comes to contemplating those games because a, a series doing them would be so massive. So right now, my plan is... It's all part of the plan. We're gonna do, we're gonna rotate some 
it's locked. Well, by rotate, I mean play them and finish them. <laughs> some like Resident Evil games, some horror games, some spooky games for fall, fall vibes, and with um, a longer series on Baldur's Gate 3, because I'm a huge fan. Shorter, more linear experiences going at the same time as a longer series to make sure people don't get bored. They're just, they're so massive and they take so long, but compared to open world games, linear experiences, they do have the benefit of like, they're kind of relaxing in that like, you know where to go. Even if you haven't played the game before, you know you gotta just like, there's a objective and that you gotta just go forward, right? Um, you're not having to make active decisions each time about what quest you wanna do, which direction you wanna go. Um, which companions you want, like who you want to talk to, so you can kind of just tune out a lot more. But they've included enough as far as balance goes in this game, and you can see I've played it so many times, I kind of know all the math and everything. Liar! Um, they've included enough that, like, there's more, there is replayability. You know, there's stuff to do. Uh, there's requests, there's, you know, different difficulty levels, you can upgrade different weapons and learn how to get good with them compared to like the weapon you decide to stick with on your first playthrough. All that kind of stuff. Of course the DLC just came out, so there's that too. Um, but then I'd also say like there's just other hidden stuff that you end up discovering as you're going along. I, for example, like I didn't know that you could just like kick those gold lock doors or slash them. When I first started playing, I was like, you gotta shoot them. Um, and that's a waste of ammo. So I discovered that on my like umpteenth playthrough and I felt like such a moron. But so there is, there's a lot of replayability. I just think Capcom's design and their difficulty tuning is brilliant. Okay, so I know there's a lot of people, not a lot, but there's some people in here. Okay, I'm gonna shoot this first. Although that would probably alert them to my presence. Okay, I'm not excited about this guy. Can we... Can we toss? Can we do this? This is the first time I've tried that. Does it sound like it? I didn't hear any reaction. Should we bother wasting another? Oh, come on. Shotgun isn't going to be useful in that... In this range, so then I don't like using anything that's not a shotgun with this guy. It's annoying. That does feel like a bit of waste of an ammo, doesn't it? Okay. I mean, we're playing on standard and I have a decent amount of bullets. Oh my god, he's such a fucking sponge. Alright, maybe I'll jump down and then shotgun. Oh my god, he can climb stairs. He, he survived that? Come on. Okay, finally he's down. Got our minotaur guys. I wonder what they're called. Oh, it'd be great if we had our grenade right now. So we have them all bottlenecked. So maybe I'll make them climb the stairs and then. Also, I guess there's reloading there. Okay. Oh, we have our second stage guy. Knocked him off that. Oh my god, I'm com I completely went through my ammo. I'm not about a minute ago, I was like, yeah, I mean, we've got bullets. It's fine. I mean, we're playing on standard energy. Nope. Two more people? Come on. Alright, let's keep trying to use this method where we knock him off the. He is not very quick on the reload, is he? Alright, let's stop. I mean, suspend disbelief here because it's like not realistic that you would stop in the middle of an encounter and fiddle through your briefcase, but you know. I don't remember there being that many enemies in this barn, but okay. Felt like a lot, wasn't it? Especially on standard. Keep working our way through, folks. See, just jumping off and rolling. I mean, he does do a roll to sort of minimize the impact, but still, again, your joints, people. Take care of them.
Okay, we got our cog. Kitchen knife. What are we doing right now, dear viewers? You can't see it on my screen. I am paused to look at the McDonald's menu. Oh, no. My roommate is going and asked me if I wanted them, so... Leonora Kennedy gets some McDonald's, folks. I'm checking. What do we want? Could I eat a Big Mac? I'm trying to cut down on red meat, but still. Well, is it red meat? <laughs> I'm text them that I need a sec. I don't even know, folks. I wasn't expecting to encourage this kind of engagement, but drop your favorite from McDonald's <laughs> down below. I know we try to eat healthy. Also, it's way too overpriced given the cost of living now, but still. One of those days, we both didn't go grocery shopping. I was gonna eat ramen. I'm gonna take a little wig break because she's getting, she's getting voluminous. I love how learning to style wigs is becoming a thing for me now because of this channel. I have one for my Baldur's Gate too, folks. All right, let's get back in. Right to jail. You know, I just box dyed my hair black. Um, Cause you know, it wasn't a phase, mom. But, uh, I don't know. And I never thought I'd be able to pull off blonde because, you know, I'm so pale. I thought it would wash me out. But I don't know. I'm digging this. I might have to dye my hair again. We'll see. It probably wouldn't work with the vibe. But, oh, the, the movement of him kicking that door and the noise is so satisfying for some reason. It tickles my brain. And he really, like, he throws his full body into, into that kick. It's great. Again, I only figured out that you could, like, slash those locks, too, um, in a recent playthrough. He's winded, folks, he's winded. All right, so we'll finally get through this gate. Hear something. Again, just jumping down, not sorry, I promise I'll stop commenting on that. I just think it's like unnecessary. <laughs> it's funny, no, I'm glad they kept it. Just like him as a person. He's just he's he's being an emo little boy, isn't he? Ugh. Oh, I hate this section. I think I know what we're coming up to soon. I love kicking those barrels too. It's very satisfying. Um, especially when you manage to get two. It just looks fun, all of the sort of roundhouse kicks he does. Like, I wanna kick in a door someday. I don't wanna be in a situation where I have to feasibly kick in a door. Maybe if I go to like a rage room or something. All right, we're just gonna make sure. This is a dead end, but I just wanna get all the loot. Cash is not helping us really right now because we haven't met the merchant yet, but it will. Folks, I mean, could picking up more money hurt? Never, right? Every one of those big gates we like. Nope, can't do that. Go the other way. We take the long way round instead then. All right. Stop the urge to freaking fiddle with my ear. I'm sorry. All right. Feelings on quick time events. I personally, I don't, I know people who hate them. I don't mind them. I think they're boring. I really don't mind them. That really woke me up, too. Um, I was just, you know, scrolling around and then. I have evaded that before, not by actually hitting the prompt. Ugh. 
um, but by just taking a step back, because that, I mean, that's your natural instinct, isn't it? And it let me do that, which is nice. I hear, I hear another guy, but I don't see him, and I don't think I bother looking. A little dark in here. Although in this in this case, it's I'm I'm so used to playing on the couch, guys. I'm, I'm getting used to OBS and all that. Um, for the sake of this channel and the community I want to build and the content I want to put out there, but um, I'm very used to playing on the couch. So my lighting setup right now is um, not ideal for seeing contrast in the dark areas. Although I historically have had trouble with that. Let's get this guy. Okay, I've had trouble with it because um, I'm one of those dumbasses who like consistently does not set her brightness settings properly. Oh, you're so cute. It's like barely visible my butt. Yeah, I I, I heard I clocked that after it came out. We're not gonna we're not gonna talk about it. Wish you weren't so fucking awkward, bud. I am very impressed that I managed to get that dynamite out of you though. I think that's the first time I've done that. Oh, okay. So I was impressed with myself, and then the universe decided to humble me. Bitch, be humble. I do like. I don't think. Maybe it just depends on the difficulty. I don't think the bear traps actually do damage, do they? Because the the health meter. But like, I don't think they do damage. And again, maybe it depends on the difficulty. I like the idea that Leon is like secretly wearing like little shin boots or something. He's got some knee highs on that protect him. Maybe that's why you can do all the jumping. I know there are people around here, so I'm gonna try to lure them into that charge. Although I don't think it really, I think I did that once before and it didn't because um, I ducked under it. I mean, that's the fun thing about the zombies in this franchise, right? Since they're, they're more, they're infected people and bioweapons and all of that. So they have varying degrees of like sentience and Competence, and you've got you know later in the island you got like zombies with machine guns. Um, so some of them you know they'll surprise you and they can duck, and that's that's part of engagement as a player and and perfectly designing the experience to make sure that people are not so frustrated with the difficulty that they're gonna like see that guy kind of duck that they're gonna check out and like rage quit. Um, but but it's not so easy that they're bored. Um, part of that is just keeping them on their toes and surprising them. How did the dynamite not get that guy? Oh, I'm annoyed. See, he really scurried over here. Didn't you see him? He was kind of running before he... I know people have... People tend to, like, get irritated with enemies that telegraph their attacks, but I like the predictability of it, personally. Oh, I, can, I can't get him because of the frickin'... I'm gonna try to step away from the dynamite. Yeah, I'm not being great in terms of resource management here, guys, I'm aware. Oh, I'm a failure! The new thing to be playing and talking to you lovely folks. We'll get better at the multitasking. Stick with me. Ah, oh, the ear. I'm sorry. I know it's fine. I did a long recording session in this week the other day. More as a practice. Um, although I do have some funny bloopers from that. I'll probably put them on TikTok and my other socials if you're interested. But, and it was fine. It was irritated for a bit, but then, um, you know, it chilled out after a while. I think anything when it's closed in, you know, ratchet synthetic fiber is gonna be a bit annoyed, but, um, but I just, it's hard to resist the urge to touch it. Where is the other dynamite lady? Down. Okay. Get away from that. Heal ourselves. We'll, we will use that yellow. Pro tip, obviously use the yellow as soon as you can because it increases your total health as well. Oh. The bear traps. And then you've got the dynamite woman. I think you can go in this way, in that cabin, can you? I do have to say, folks, I'm not a big fan of the maps in Resident Evil. <laughs> I know that's part of, you know, the franchise. It's iconic and everything, but um, I am not great in terms of my spatial awareness. Uh, 
I do get lost easily. I lost baby girl. This channel, it, there's definitely going to be a super cut at some point of just Ellie, Ellie getting lost. Um, the E and ET stands for Ellie, folks. Who am I? You sure you want to know? But uh, yeah, so the maps in this game, just, they're Byzantine, which is, you know, obviously it's part of the design. It adds to the horror element if you can't find your way around. Um, it's, if something's hard to navigate and something a big baddie is chasing you, um, you're going to be stressed and things are going to be more difficult. You know, in this, obviously, we don't have... Although, I think occasionally people sort of stalking you, but you don't have the same in terms of big baddies as some of the other remakes. Like, you don't have a nemesis or a um, Mr. X following you around. Stars. But it's still, I don't know, it gets frustrating after a while. Oh, you do have that section in the castle, though, where you're running around as Ashley and you're kind of vulnerable. All right, maybe we take care of these people on the bridge because that's where they're throwing dynamite from I think. Right, come here. Why are you squatting like that? It's like a linebacker on a high school football team or something. Alright, so we took care of her. She's gonna stop shouting. Although no, there's another guy. Over there. Go ahead, try to light it. Try me. I do have to say, I don't think they utilized the Spanish bar with enough of a variety. Um, I sh oh god, I should look up what they actually mean, though. I'm sure someone's translated them. I'm sure this game is more fun to play if you speak Spanish. Um, but yeah, I don't think they were variable enough. Personally, okay, so we have, I'm guessing we have a mutated guy. It was the one I just killed. Yeah. Okay. They really scramble. Um, but yeah, I'm, although people shouting at you in a language you don't speak is that it's a good aspect of horror. You know, that idea of humans, we, you know, we thrive on communication and it's, you know, it's scary when you've got people running around obviously undead with weapons shouting at you, but if they're shouting things that you can't understand, that adds to it, um, being able to not communicate. So the psychological aspect of that, although not really a play in this game, it doesn't make a huge difference, but um, in, maybe in other forms of media, um, it's interesting. This the place? This the place. Again, I love that motion. You know, I never really thought I was an ASMR girl. Like, actually, you know what? I'm gonna look up the barks that I was talking about because I'm curious. Knowledge. All right, a couple things that the villagers are yelling at us as we're running around. People who speak Spanish right now are rolling their fucking eyes. Te voy a hacer picadillo. Can run, but you can't hide. That, that's a great one. Don't let him escape. No brainer. Uh, behind you, imbecile, imbecile, yeah. It can't be. Uh, th that's funny. It's a telenovela, isn't it? Prepare the trap. Oh, that's, I mean, that's good intel. If you're, um, you know, a Spanish-speaking player, I guess you have more of a heads up for things than we do. Be careful. Okay. And what the fuck. Yeah, of course. All right, there. We educated ourselves a little. Um, let's get back into it. Okay. All right, obviously we hear charges. So there's somewhere in the room. Bullets. Oh, sorry. I got these like flyaways that keep getting in my face. Okay, we're gonna duck because we're here. Wait, can you slash those wires with your knife? I wonder. I've never tried. Um, I don't know if I want to try later. Do it. Or if I just am hoping someone will answer that for me in the comments. Because, uh, I again, I didn't know that you could slash locks, but noise? you can now. Yeah, what is that noise, Leon? <sighs> Although, I don't know, like, would your knife be strong? Would that trigger it? I mean, it probably would trigger it. Or, uh, knowing me, I would accidentally hit the box. <laughs> okay, let's try to sneak up on this guy. Oh, he gets up. <laughs> Such a sway. Is that because I have an up, up? Loaded, uh, upgraded my gun, or is it because I um, haven't been playing in so long? 
Yeah, Leon, just kick it. It's your favorite activity, kicking things. Down here. Ooh, I know what scene's coming up. Talk more about story. Flashlight. I like that the flashlight is automatic. Um, although sometimes it's not turned on in areas where I think it should be. But again, that's probably because I'm a dumbass when it comes to brightness. I wonder who this could be. <laughs> Louis. That hurts me no. so much. Like you really wanted to talk. They're oh, banjo. Now, uh, say, uh, you got a smoke? Oil, like. Again, we saw Leon him. turning down oh, a smoke well, earlier. Maybe just a Although we do that. find out later it's, you know, code word with him and Ada, but he does also smoke, so. Not this guy. Who are you? Okay, stop right there. Yeah, Leon, he's totally gonna listen to you. That, also, that wasn't very, like, assertive, the way he said stop right there, was it? <laughs> he's a little casual about it. This is another area where I was like, he's been jumping out of buildings and stuff, and he gets thrown into one wall and he's out. I don't know. Seems convenient. End of our chapter. Um, I don't know about the chapter system here. Uh, I, I like that it's divided. I like things that are divided and structured. Um, it makes looking at the narratology. Of the game a little bit easier, you know, you can like literally map it through one, two, three. Um, look, see if it has a three-act structure and all that. Uh, but I, I personally think there are a little bit too many in this remake. I think they could have ended chapters at times that felt a little bit more natural. Like he's gonna wake up. Spoiler: There's gonna be a cutscene right after this. It makes sense here because he's unconscious. But in some of the later areas where the chapter ends, I feel like they sort of cut off the momentum that was started during the scene uh, just to end the chapter and then they open another chapter with another cutscene it's like well can you just end the, end the chapter after that cutscene that you open the chapter with I think in general they also have overcompensated in terms of save points there's so many typewriters and you also save after each chapter and then yeah they only give you 20 slots to save so it's like part of it though I think um, they're giving us more saves because it's like a it's a hard game that B it's a that's an expectation now with games in general you know that you have more opportunities to save as opposed to way back in the history of gaming when like barely any opportunities but i also like in the beginning of the franchise you know the fact that you have to run around and collect ribbons and all of that and saving was so arduous you've saved me on that note thanks to capcom's kind prompting <laughs> i think i'm gonna call this episode here the inaugural episode of my brand new channel i had such a good time guys uh, i hope you did too or at least i said something of interest to you Get your brain's going about games a little bit i have no idea how long this part of the playthrough is going to be after i put it through editing but I feel like we we accomplished quite a bit. I am paused, I am paused to look at the McDonald's menu. I'm trying to come down on my knee, but still. More importantly, we got to know each other a little bit. The one thing that I do remember um, actually sort of freaking me out is the baby wandering around, um, the big like running fetus thing. I think maybe there was something psychological going on there with, with me being a child. Bearing and we got to geek out about games. Put you right back. I was beaming. I'm like, oh, I'm back. This game, the nostalgia of my childhood, the dopamine is just. Please let me know if I said anything that sort of resonates with you. If you have extra thoughts, like articles, um, personal anecdotes, etc. I love talking about games so much. And as much as I love my friends, they are not nearly as hyper fixated on this stuff as I am. Shut up, you whiner! I'd love to get a community going. Uh, yeah. Anyway, so we will be playing lots more. I will literally be playing more right now. I'm not going to bother getting in all this get up monstrosity of a Leon kind of idiot goes clubbing wig. Um, or, you know, like Eastern European prostitute. Just to film one episode. So it should be up ASAP. Uh, I hope you have a great whatever it is, whatever time of day it is, wherever you are in the world, whether it's a good morning, good afternoon, or sleep tight. Wish you the best and see you soon. Catch you later.